Okay, and that's going to do it for the combat phase. I'm not going to make any other attacks right now. Go ahead. So after the combat phase comes the exploitation phase. And the exploitation phase is for the active players, anybody who's got marked as reserve or anybody who happened to gain exploit during combat. One of the results you can gain during combat is the ability to go again during the exploit phase. I have just a single unit right here that I have marked and reserved. So I'm going to release him from reserve. And I'm going to move him his full movement. It's the river, so... I'm going to uh, interrupt for just a second. Um, when did you mark... F when do you select units for reserves? Start of the first phase? You, you do that at the beginning of your movement phase. Well, not at the beginning of the movement phase. Before the unit moves, you can mark him with a reserve marker. So during the gotcha, movement okay. phase, what I did is I, I marked him there. Now you yeah, can move other units first and then mark him, but... Oh, All right, mode. Mode. Sorry, Bill, go right ahead with what you were going to say. I'm just saying that the, the movement phase is the... Um, you, you set the mode the unit's going to be in, whether he wants to flip to his mobile side or stay on the combat side, or if he was going to be able to go in rever reserve or strap mode or something. The other, th other thing to remember is you have a limit, limited number of reserve counters per side. Depend it's scenario dependent. Sometimes you don't get the, you know, but one or two to use. Yeah. Then are the one are the ones that you have stacked up there along the Chinese border? Or are they just on the map for grins? That's my limit. Of, oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's the limit. Those are the ones I'm using. Yeah, my excess ones are out in the ocean to the right. Okay, so after the uh, exploitation phase, which is split into movement, barrage, and combat comes the last phase which is just the cleanup and here's where if it was my turn and I had units marked disorganized I'd be able to remove the disorganized counter if I had fueled units I'd remove the fuel status things like that this this point I don't have any anything to do for cleanup so that ends the player turn what we do now this is, is where it can get real turn. interesting right <laughs> yeah I can and what we're gonna do here we move on to the uh, 29th of November. And the very first thing we do is we determine the weather. So if you look at the Korea charts. Yeah, actually, if you go to the views up on the control panel and. Yeah, it's actually in the upper left of the map, too. So if you look at the very upper left, you'll see a weather table there on the side. And in this game, all we we'll really roll for, roll for is to see if we're allowed to have any flight during the turn. So I'll go ahead and roll a single die. A one, which is no flight. Not good for, for the UN. The demonstration, though. <laughs> well, I think for purposes of the demonstration, we'll go ahead and call it flight. Oh, okay. Just so they can get a... We can see how it works, yeah. Okay, the next part of the, the turn before we start the actual player turns is we determine who goes first. So we each roll 2d6 for initiative, so I'll go ahead and roll first. Now, according so to now the I've, rules, I've, I'm, I rolled the highest, so I could say that Jim moves first, or I could say that I move first. I, could, I can call it either way. Um, Obviously, in this situation, I need to get the heck out of some of these places, so I'm really lucky that I'm getting got to move again right now with these holes in my line. He could be uh, cutting me up pretty good. 